And welcome back everyone to a Scouts of Entertainment 5v3 Third Age Reforged Siege Battle replay today. Today's battle comes from Buzzard. Thank you very much, Buzzard. He's one of three defenders today. And before we get started, if you guys would like to send me through other Reforged replays like this, or other Total War replays like from Napoleon Total War 3, Rome 2, Warhammer 2, just to name a few, there are links in this on your screen, which you'll find in the description below. There's also a link to join my Discord server, Scouts Reconnaissance, where you can post all manner of Total War replays into the Battle Replay sub-channel. There's also an area for YouTubers to post their own content too, for the community to enjoy, as well as tell the community about their channels, and also collaborate with the YouTubers if they so wish. I also have various funding options available if you guys would like to support my work, it does really help out the channel and the Discord, including YouTube membership options, which give members access to custom emojis and badges. Now with that, let's get into the replay today. So if you guys do enjoy my content, you know what to do. You need to smash the like button to support this video and the channel. Subscribe if you haven't already. And tick that bell for notifications so you stay up to date with all the latest content as it drops. And leave your own thoughts about this battle in the comment section below. With that, let's get into the army comms. So, we've got Numenor here, commanded by Buzzard, as I said. And you've got some Numenorean shield guard here, some Pharisee Swordmasters, Royal Legion of Amandalos, some Belgar archers out front. We've got two divisions here of Seafarers and of Nindalos. Some Numenorean steel bows here, AP archers. Numenorean vanguard here, which is a decent cavalry unit, as I've learnt in previous replays actually, so you know. Don't dismiss them. If you can bring them, bring them. We have some Belgar pikemen, a couple units there. Obviously with sieges guys, if you're going to bring cavalry, make sure you can use it effectively. And maybe know the map before you bring them, okay? We have some Nunarin Steel Bows here. We've got some Nunarin Cohort. Looks to be three units here. And some Nunarin Shield Guard. We've got some Naru Naru Guard here. Along with some Adunian Shadow Bows. Some Naru Naru Sentinels. And some Belga Archers, a second unit there. And moving on to the back of the city here, we find some allies in an unlikely place. Up here on the ridge. Okay. We've got some. We've got Angmar here, coming by Valkyrion. We have some Witches of Angmar here, I've spotted them straight away, I'm happy with that. And we got two units of Witchrom Scourge Raiders. An odd place to find some very powerful units for Angmar, so far away from the rest of the army. But there, Angmar's gone to great lengths to keep these guys out of harm's way, at least for now. And this map looks very familiar, except with, um, instead of being all land and a keep in the middle, we find ourselves looking at water. So this is a modified map to a map I have seen previously. I don't remember the name of it, but maybe you guys recognize it too. There are some distinct features that give it away. We have Harad here, the final defender, commanded by Y2K86. So obviously Angmar's and Harad's armies we're going to find just here. We have some Sathron archers, some Mumakil here, a bit of a risk to bring Mumakil. We have some oh, have a catapult here, some Sathron archers. We've got some Sathron pikemen over here, some demons of the desert. Dismounted Serpent Guard here, armored up, two units there. Trollman of Harad, Sathron warband. Some Barrow Whites hidden. We've got some Armored Up uh, Witchrun Pikemen. And some Witchrun Hammer Guard here, not Armored. We've also got some Gundabag Guard here. I think maybe we've got two units here of Witchrun Pikemen. Or well, maybe it's just the one. It is, a, it is a unit of 123, so possibly just the one unit actually. We have some Black Watch Legion. Not too surprising that. As I have said previously, it is a good idea these days to bring such units. This is a big, this is a heavy um, body pushing unit that can push through any defense, maybe stop a surging attack. Now before, it wasn't really common to bring these kind of units if you were a defender, it was if you were an attacker. But um, players have started using these units recently to just head off incoming surges from their enemies. Buy time for the defenders actually to throw their javelins, axes and AP arrows, BP arrows, whatever, to just kill their enemy in a pocket, which these guys will help you create. We have some Guardians Kandun here, three units armored up. We have some, gun, uh, some trolls that have Angmar here, sorry, and some trolls of Gundabad. And I think we'll head over this way. We have some Black Serpents here, some Champions of Nafarad, Troll of Nafarad, more South on Pikemen, South on Warband, and Dismounted Serpent Guard. The rest of the units appear to be hidden, and so we'll move on to the first of five attacking armies today, I reckon. And over here we find ourselves looking at Isengard, commanded by Frodo Baggins. Good day, Frodo. We've got three units here of Urukai Pikes. We've got two units of Urukai Raiders. We have some Urukai Infantry here, two units, and two units of half of Vanguard. Alright, over here we have some Urukai Reavers, Nazgah High, Urukai Berserkers, and Trolls of the White Hand. And if there are any other units, I cannot see them right now. So let's move on. 
Next we have Rudo, given by Chuck Norris. A descendant of Chuck Norris, maybe. We have some Herodan nobles here. We got some Herodan berserkers. Axe throwing unit and DC melee unit. We have some Rudo swordsmen here. Looks to be three units in this line. Some Wishroman slavers. Herodan pikes, one unit there. Dumbin pikemen next. We got two more units of Rudo swordsmen. We got two units of Ethimos troll hunters and two units of Dumbin spearmen. No archers that I can see here for Ruda. A little bit odd, but um, we possibly might see some troll shot axe towers later on. I'd be surprised if you didn't bring them. They're one of Ruda's best units, in my opinion. Next, we have Rune, given by Stegri 4. I say Stregri 4 all the time, but it's Stegri 4. I gotta drop the R before the E there. We have two units of Lok Sion Rim. We got about three units of Lok Gamp Rim. And three units of Lok Flag Rim, I feel. We have two units of Backlog Tribesmen here, armoured up. And we've got some Dragon's Wrath crossbows here, and some Kamul's Chosen. And I don't see any Eastron crossbows, but they could be hidden. Again, keeping our eye out for hidden units later on. Next we have Mordor, can ride TC1351. We have Orc Fodder here at the back. Some Orc Fodder on the side, and Orc Fodder out front. And he's got his ally there to on his left flank, so you know. TC is going for a more defensive deployment. We have some Moron Archers here, two units there. Orc Javelins, two units, and Olag High. We got some Blackguard of Baradur, two units there. Some Minus Mordor Chosen. Temple Executioners armored up. Ur Captains. Orc Mordors, looks to be three units there. Moron Infantry, three units. And that's all I see there for him. I'm not sure if he bought any Nazgul. He might have run out of money. Oh no, hang on. I see them there. Right there, Nazgul. So this is a solid army here. I think TC could be the backbone of this attack. He's got a lot of heavy hitters here, especially the back guard of Barador. He's also got the Temple Executioners, all Javelins. Gonna be of vital importance later on. Not so much the Moron Archers, but this right here, this little section of TC's army is the, is the muscle of his whole army and a strong component of this whole attack. So we'll see how well he goes. Next we have, and finally, Dumbin, King of Demons, Hunter, King of Demons. And you've got some Dunning Clansmen here, looks to be maybe four units there. Three units of Dunning Veterans. Half Orc Vanguard, two units there. Half Orc Spearguard, two units. And Rise of Warp Rise of Warp Bank there, sorry. And that's what I see there. But um, obviously, there's got to be some hidden units. There's going to be more than that. More to them than this, sorry. Oh, hang on. Maybe right they're over here. We have some Spears of Warp Bank over here. This is Dunning's best unit for sure. And that's, yeah, again, all I can see. So, we'll get this siege started, guys. Enjoy! Now, I feel like Demons might play an important role here. He's definitely going to make the enemy think that the attack is bigger than it is, because all these units here are mostly light to mid-tier units, mostly on the lighter side, in my opinion. And so, a huge attack from him will definitely goat the defenders into wasting a lot of ammunition on his blob. So, that could um, save the elites later on in the battle. We'll see how well he goes with that. And we might have a small break for ahead of us. Check's moving up. He might wait for his allies. I saw Trolls Draxos before, right there. I didn't see any artillery pieces though for the attackers, which is a little unusual. Because, you know, a hit from a ballista, particularly a ballista, would send the more kill running on muck and basically take them off the field straight away. That's a big gamble with Nimble Kill these days, guys. They hate fire and they hate artillery to no end. Just one direct hit on one of them can make you lose the entire unit. So, if you're going to be Nimble Kill, my recommendation is to keep them in reserve for as long as possible and use them mainly as a last resort or if you need to sort of tip the scale of battle in your favor at a crucial point, you know. Obviously, it's up to you to spot that point, but, um, Never throw your kill straight into battle, straight off the bat, okay? It's too easy to cancel them. You gotta try and wear your enemy down, your, wear your enemy's ability down to take them out first before you send them into battle. Maximize their effectiveness, or chance of effectiveness. Now, we don't see the defenders coming this way, or maybe we do. Frodo's just taking his time. The enemy massing outside, this is pretty cool. A Stegri. I've got to teach me how to pronounce that name so I get it right. I know I'm watching. We've got some backup tribesmen out here. I 
They're under fire, but they're armoured up, so, you know. Rune shouldn't be too concerned about that. He won't lose too many. I think that fire's coming from the normal kill. We've got Southron archers, but they're not firing. And that's another important reason not to throw normal kill into battle straight away. Remember, guys, they are an archer unit too, so, you know, try to use that ammunition first before you send them into the fight. The Herod and Nobles, and yeah, I think um, Tech Norris, and he's doing this, he's doing it right. He's sending his cavalry in to try and hammer the barrel ice before. Oh no, he's pulled out, damn it. I thought he was going to go in there. When I was battling, jeez, <laughs> Corrigan, I got it right. When I was battling Corrigan, I was just doing cycle charges against the barrel ice for ages before I sent my troops in. You can wear the barrel ice down without losing your cavalry to enemy fire, do it. Like, this is going to be slow going if Czech does this. And the Barrowatch will probably win the battle. The Southern Warband is a light speed unit. Cavalry can still take them out. Light camp units moving up. This definitely increases the, increases the Rudar Swordsman's chances. But um, I'm liking the defenders' battle line here. Even with this muscle. Oh, okay, careful, guys. If I had ranges nearby, I'd fire a couple of volleys into this for sure. I always say this: don't hesitate. If you're going to attack, attack. If you're not going to do attack, don't put your men in harm's way needless. Now this next threat is unavoidable, but the attackers, if they're planning their next moves ahead, they've got to be wary of the demons over here, for sure. If they push in, if they surge in, they're going to create a huge opening for the demons to attack. And that could kneecap the entire attack straight off the bat, once it begins. And Vicarious keeping his riches in reserve. Over here. Oh, hang on, hang on. What's going on over here? We got Mordor surging into the city unopposed. Alright, so yeah, we have seen this commonly. Defenders seem to be withdrawing to hold one section of the city, and it probably is far easier for them to do this. Because the enemy, the enemy can come in from two choke points. And if it's just one player over here, it's going to be hard to defend against all that. But what the attackers have got to be cautious of here is the fact that they're going to be funneled into a choke point here, and they got artillery nearby. They got the witches, but as long as they can get their archers close enough, they can take out the witches quickly. Now, I don't know why Demon Hunter's doing this. He's putting one of his best troops in harm's way. And he probably needs units like this to shoot the witches once they come into range off that hill. We're under attack. Barrowites, Barrowites out front. Do they have our, do they have heavy cavalry? I don't think they have heavy cavalry on this side. It's just Mordor and Dummond. I know it's just heavy cavalry, but they're not really known for their charges. And Buzzer should just embed his Nari Nari Sentinels amongst the Barrow Whites using his meat shield. Easy peasy. Now, what's going on over here? We've got Miller Kill here. I'm getting in danger close, I reckon. We might be trying to use the elevation to shoot down at the enemy. Yeah, he is. Uh, again, <laughs> keep him out of harm's way there. Be careful. Well, which one of Scourge Raiders up top here? So, my current's been busy. Okay, so we got Witches of Angmar. So, but they just. Okay, they walked across. They were over there before, so there must be a pathway there. And there is. Okay, so they just walked over here. 
Alright, so the threat of the witches is gone on this side, so maybe if I was the attackers, TC and demons, I would just surge straight through with, with the threat of the witches and the artillery not here in this checkpoint. The units they have here could be of a concern if it was most other factions, but with the Black Guard of Baradur, if they just send everything straight at the enemy, they can probably break through with minimal casualties. I'm not seeing the Adidium Shadowbows anywhere. I'm not seeing any Ranger units that would deter that such a plan. Hey, oh, I do see now. Yeah, you gotta be quick. Once you commit, there's no going back. And Buzzard probably left these guys in the wrong place. He's gonna have to move them to be effective, so they get them on the hill. Sending your clansmen against like against ranger units. It's not gonna work out very well. I know what I said about drawing the enemy's fire and wasting ammunition. But if Deems is gonna throw everything at him at once, then they need to break through this defense as quickly as possible. Cancel out the time that the Indian Shadowbows have to fire at them. I suppose Deems should be counting his lucky stars here that the Indian Shadowbows aren't firing into him already. Spears of Warframe moving up as well. Okay. Oh, what have we got over here? We've got Isengard, I think, coming, trying to come through. Yep, we do. Okay. So the Isengard attacks in full swing. And we've got fire coming in from the Moomba Kill and the Southland Archers, I believe, up here. You can move his archers again, it's closer there. If you only should. So it makes it easier for his men to fire over that ledge. What we got here? We got Hashari Stalkers. He should be counting his lucky stars there. He's shooting from the furthest unit. And God knows he needs to. So we've got Seven Fangs firing in here now as well. Alright, looks like some of Frodo's men broke on him. And uh, Haraz done a great job here deterring Isengard. Look, Frodo's position of attack is um, is tough. Especially with, with the Shari Shadows up here. We didn't see them before. We have Demons of the Desert over here now. Okay. Catapults there. We have Shari Stalkers over here. Okay. So he's got two units of Rangers. It is 15 to 17. Barrowites here, they're down to 117. It's taking a few casualties. I'm usually not a big fan of using your your axes against the Barrowites. It's annoying how many hits they can take and not seem to die. There's no real target to hit besides the Barrow Whites or Snuggler Stalkers in front of them. The good about guards moving away. Most of the axes I feel are going to the side of the hill here if they do fire. Yeah, we're showing Scourge Raiders over here. Demons are back at. Okay, hang on. Demons here. They're 58. Alright, alright. So maybe he's got two units of demons. Is that right? 
Yep, he's got two units of demons. Shoot. Yeah, I feel for the attackers now. It's tough. So what do we got here? We've got some, got some saffron piping. So when they when Frodo does move in again, we got some troll shacks over here. Thirty-one reloading. We got Herodan nobles here that can run in and engage black serpents, preventing them from being recharged. They can get in there fast enough. They can use the hill here as cover. Possibly even take out Y2K's general, and he's right there. And the kill as well. Could fall. Now, check and fire, she go after the moon kill. They're targeting the moon kill. Okay, the shy shows must be out of ammunition. Let's head back over here. Okay, Snugger skirmishes. Oh, taking buses to town here. Why is Buzzard not sending his troops into battle or putting them out? This unit's hut mostly dead. This was going to join them in a second if he's not careful. He's sending his unit into battle so he knows they're under attack. I don't know why he's keeping this unit at bay. Is he trying to soak up the snake skirmish fire? And if so, what's the reason for that? This is not a unit you want to throw away. The and shield guard isn't a bad unit. He's sending his Farrows and Soulmasters already. I mean, he should be walking the park for Farrows and Soulmasters. They're going to rack up a ton of kills here, I reckon. So this is going to exhaust them. This is going to damage them. When it comes to dealing with the attack on the elites, Buzzard might be playing his best card too soon. 23 to 23, so the Packers have poured this one back to even. Rise of War Thinker is still alive, I am surprised by that. Okay, the Snugger Skimish is here. This is a fire. We're going after the Numerian Steel Bows. Definitely a good idea. Can't argue with that. More on the ice, should target them as well. As should the Rise of Warfare. Oh, uh, okay. Looks like they're targeting the Duran cohort, but they're unintentionally getting kills on the Dinim Shadowbows. They must know they're there. Buzzard might have revealed them. Another on the TC. Very sneaky there. But that's one way to kill them without seeing them. Other grass is out of ammunition. So that attack is stalled somewhat. This one here seems to be picking up some pace. It looks like the witches fired in previously. And the seafarers and the Lindemoss, both units here from Buzzard, firing the Flagrim and Dunning Spearman. That is a little strange. Too soon. Way too soon to use the javelins. I was hearing some bang bang before, but I didn't see anything. I think most of the artillery shots there went to the side of the hill. Y2K should be stationing their catapult on the hill there in an easy angle. You need the right angle to fire your artillery into your enemy. It'd be far easier for them to hit the target there than it is over there. And they've got Balfour Tribesman here. They might be trying to. Get a shot off maybe into the Wichon Python or Wichon Hammer Guard. That would be ideal. If we could hit the Hammer Guard. Let's see what he can do. He could be going after Seafarers. Seafarers it is. But they're out of ammunition. This is more of a mid tier unit without their javelins. If you need to use your javelins on mid tiers, do it, but you better off saving your javelins and your axe throws for the elite tier troops. 
It just makes life easier. Of course, the challenge is getting your units to that point to fire on the elites. That's the challenge you have to overcome. Steel boat is here down to 43, so they've lost almost half their unit. If not lost half their unit already. Shadow boat is still hiding. Yeah, they are. Okay, this is why they went down so fast. Demons has got his spears of all things, their crossbows taking these guys out. Looks like Steel boats are struggling to find a target. Demis is doing his job here. Can I argue with that? Okay, now they're trying to overlap the attack here. And this is where the attack is going to reinforce this area. The Spears of War Tank are doing a nice job here deterring defending forces. They're right there. Spears here can fire on these Shadow Bows if they reveal themselves. The Steel Bows here have been reduced to practically nothing. So the attackers here can cover their flank. And down at 21. Demon's probably needs to conserve his ammunition. Perhaps it's almost as down to half strength. Flying for a long time, probably got hundreds of kills. I wager. Okay, but Karan was thinking about sending in his hammer guard, but he pulled them out. The Dragon's Wrath guilds are moving up. I'm not sure why exactly. There's no other units nearby that can, can really go after besides the Barrow Whites here. These are Serpent's Fangs, don't seem to run out of ammo. Formation checks trolls here. We're dying quick. The scavenger is moving up. Okay, they're out of ammo. Well, they ain't bad in battle either. I understand why Eisenhower might be a bit skittish wanting to continue this attack. But he didn't leave any spears at the mouth. The mistake Y2K has exploded very well. Now, for a little mic of this in the back, he might not. Probably should have left some spears here just to guard that choke point there. Okay, so the quicker they're done in general. Shield guard or steel bows.
What have you got here? Got a lot of fire coming up here. Go with the buzzard's pikeman. Forty to forty here. Shoot. Now these steel bows had ammo, so why Buzzard didn't try and take out the spears of all thing, that is a mystery. Royal Guard here has ammo, but they're in the wrong place to shoot. The defense probably need to press the attack here and try and take out the Spears of Warthank if possible. We've got Orc Fodder moving up again. TC had three of these units originally. Grab some sword muscles down to 13. Everything I'm seeing here, TC just needs to bring up his back out of Barador. He needs to just bring up everything. Go for the win. I reckon if he just attacked in force right now, we could smash through this defense, send the whole defense of the city into chaos. That would that would enable his attacking allies on the other sides here to launch their own assaults. The defense here would scramble, not knowing where to, not knowing which way to send reinforcements. I think the attackers here will need to send in force their own troops just to sort of keep them here to prevent them from reinforcing the collapse in defense where TC is, for example. And we know the witches are around here somewhere. We also know the artillery is here. That's why, I'm, that's why I'm saying for TC to just go for it right now. Let's just double check that. He's got two units here of Spears of Warfare, you would see. Okay, we've got Hashari Stalkers here. Now I'm sort of against maybe setting up an attack. And the artillery is here now as well. As you can see, got lucky. Okay, yeah, this changes things. I'll call, I'll call off the attack now when I saw that. Get high. First it was too short, now it was too long. Why is okay? Can't take a can't catch a break. And fire again. This looks promising. Ah, it just skirted them again. They're too high. Troll show Axo is there. Lunar Cohort under fire. Okay, Shy Stalkers, it could be firing in. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this is gonna tear it. This is why you need the back guard to get in there quickly. You can smash through this defense. Lally takes the break to spread out. I suppose what would you guys do in this situation? Would you commit your black guard barrier door to try and break through? Would you watch your force here be sorted by the Hashari Stalkers? We 
if you lead your troops here, try to go up the enemy to wasting as much ammunition on them as possible. Oh, sorry, using ammunition on them as possible. It wouldn't be a waste. That's probably not too fair to say. That's not good. Once again, needs to fire that catapult crew. We're really letting him in. I can't see the witches anywhere. I went looking for them before, but I do not see them. It's possible he's moved them to safety. Etamos Tranters must have used the javelins, they got their spears out right now. Little Snago skirmishes over here. Going after the champions in Nafarat, because you know, why not? Try to take some support pot shots there at the general. Use their crossbows to take him in. Suffer nice says, Alright, they're ready. Slang of Skims has come back in. Frodo probably just thinks it's easier to take down the front line defense before he moves in. They are just the answers I remember. Got uh, Kieran's trolls here hunting someone. Oh, they killed the rise of all think. Okay. Who's that? There's the Witches of Angmar. Full unit, in fact. I don't know where they're off to. But hey, with them gone, I feel more relaxed. Sending in my forces. This defensive line here is looking pretty thin. It's probably why we've got Charon sending in his trolls. Pikens moving up, Charles of Angmar thinking about going in. No more kills here. I think we've got the Frodon Javelins here firing a no more kill. Okay, we've got the Trolls here trying to disrupt them. Oh no, they're running amok. Oh, this is great news for the attackers. Oh, that hurt. Jesus, is lucky. Getting back up, but... Oh no, they're re this one could be forming. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Usually the pipe never gets controlled back, even if they do reform. It's a rare thing to happen. Belkos Sapphire Blazeman under attack. We need to throw the javelins first. Sixty-one to sixty. Let's see how we got a bit of a mass here.
Why the guy is this point? This kind of it's just probably yelling. Give me a break! Come on, score a hit already. Now he might have scored some hits while we were away. I do not know. Four guards in the horrible position. Chance here for the Vanguard to strike soon. Shadowbase here must be out of ammunition for being sent into battle. Vanguard's taking them out, but the units almost destroyed themselves. Ooh, it's a full unit of all javelins. With their javelins. TC needs to get them out of guard mode. Sorry, needs to get them into guard mode. Now, how the hell did that happen? TC just lost 150. All Japanese. They weren't even that far ahead of the army. But hell, a sole opportunity here for the defenders to exploit. Royal Easton's over here trying to hold them off. Well, carry on to the rescue. Seriously, TC is going to be cracking it right now. I know I would be. It's a full unit that broke them. It's insane. That definitely the defenders right. But, the positive for the defenders is the more kill created a small barrier to the choke point, making it difficult for the attackers to get through. Is it too soon to send up the Blackwatch Legion? Hell of a weapon to break through pikes, that's for sure. I'm smash through this long enough to than nothing. The, you know, the trick to successful pushes is that you have to follow them up with support. You can't just send them out like this. See what's what. Dean's here down to eight. A couple of witches there are dead. The rest are up here. Shari Stalker's full unit with ammo. Look, Dean's up here. Throw a bag into his crossbows. They need to be kept close. Jeez, we could be trying to fire point blank in the seven guard. I mean, he should be. Yeah, it's a little bit irritating that sometimes the crossbows just want to get into a proper position before they fire.
80 and 79. Alright, we got the tickets broken through. We got Trolls Vankler down to 9. All these troops here, they're broken. We got a big force coming across. Black guy here getting 96. That was the last of the Royal Legion. Okay, there goes Buzz's general and he's finished. Alright, look, Dunlin and Mordor need to go, go, go. They gotta run. It's time to attack, they gotta reinforce their allies. Now the defenders have a big choice to make. Do they go for the high ground? Do they try to push out, destroy the enemies in front of them? And turn around and face their foes, or what? What's the play here? I mean, there's not too many troops here. The defenders commit quickly and possibly smash through. Take out all these troops. We've got the seven things here, trying to kill the Okai crossbows. Frodo is pretty much finished. He probably should abandon his attack. And set well, he should have done it a little while ago. Samuel says he's only to reinforce the rune and the Rudar attack. He's having far greater success. The guys are kind of doing it, moving towards the choke point. Capital has ammo, planning to get it up here. And they already have. Just planning to move it a bit more that way. Okay, now that any general has fallen, it's going to be Frodo's general. Here trying to get to the high ground. I'm clear if the things have any ammo, it's possible. Catapult is not shooting. Jeez, if they can get the catapult up the hill, they should. We got a lot of troops here, nicely packed. Like okay, you should probably start probing just to see what the attackers do here. Okay, Valkyrian's forces here getting a little bit touched up. That's probably the target to go after. If he scores a hit, the damage to the attackers would be far greater here than it would be over here, of course. Uh, that's too high. 
It is 88 to 83 here. Okay, well, we got Czech and Stegri surging forwards. And we've got someone making defeat already. There could be Buzzard. I'm trying to mop up the last of the Barrow Whites. They'll delay the enemy for sure. Most of the Guardians here are dead. That attack looks like it's a little ways off yet. Alright guys, we're back. Let me take a surging up the hill here. Frodo's heading around the long way. He's heading back towards the, his original battle. This time he can walk through the plains without being slaughtered. Yeah. So they're trying to attack the defenders from all sides here, but we've got the Wish on Black Guard here from Valkyrie on guarding this area. Not gonna be a cakewalk there. Which is of Angmar here. And they're on the ledge. They better move it. Well, that'll do it. Oh, he took out one of his own trolls. The spears of Orthanc then might be out of their range. Run, Valkyrion, run! It's like everyone. Run, run! That kind of barrel door must be a pathfinding issue he's having. Okay, you got him out of there. Jeez, Hara won't be able to hold here for very long. 93 to 87. Give the attackers a chance, the witches need to suddenly appear over the ridge on this hill, fire down, destroy the attackers here, then everything, all the defenders need to turn around here and try to defeat what they have left. We can try to defeat Mordor with what they have left, but I'm probably not going to hold my breath. The witches look like they're out of ammunition, they charge straight into battle. Which on Blackguard? Looks like they fought their way down the hill. Now they're between a rock and a hard place. Things just got away from the defenders. I thought they had men. I thought they had demons with ammunition still at this stage, but. Clearly I was wrong. 97 to 88. And they're done. Alright, here. He's going to be attacked from the rear very soon. Might be defeated before any forces show up. With Herod and Pikeman down below, the attackers definitely have enough to win here. Alright, we got times two spinning it, possibly six spinning it to the end here, as this is the last battle. And it's going to be a slaughter.
was seeing my general. I'm just being pushed down the hill here. Who's this? And that's TC as an asshole. That's it. So congratulations to Demons Hunter and his team there on their victory. Demons Hunter they're getting 1202. TC1351, 945. Stegrity 4, we've got 1125. And Chuck Norris, 1153. Fraudor Baggins, 698. Buzzard here getting 2699. Y2K, 3231. And Valkyrion on 1953. So good kill counts there from all around. Alright, casualties here. Numenorean Vanguard here, that's a cavalry unit. 117, not bad. I did have Shadow Bows here, 290, that's a little surprising. I thought they could have racked up a lot more. Uh, Seafarers here, each got over 80. Bellagra Archers did pretty well, 105 to 260. Farrows and Swordmasters, as expected or surpassed my expectations there, 602. Royalties of Amelos, though, did not do so well, 106. And Numenorean Cohort here, 112. Bell unit, 30. And looking at that, Numerian Shield Guard 115. The rest of his units did poor to excellent. Or wow. incredible if we count the Pharaohs and Swordmasters. And that is it there. So, if you guys did enjoy this replay and want to see your own features here on this channel, you can send them to my email at scoutsofentertainment at gmail.com. You can post them to me directly on the Discord via direct message. Or you can post them to the Battle Replay sub-channel on my Discord server at Scouts Reconnaissance. Links to all those methods of contacting me are in the video's description. Hope to hear from you. This is Scouts of Entertainment signing off. Thank you to Buzzer for sending me the replay. And I'll catch you guys in the next Third Age Reforged Battle.